Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. This is Pentecost Sunday, and um, we may teach some things that you've heard, 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 and heard, but that's okay. It's good to hear it again. Amen. I don't we're going to be talking about, you know, it's the day of Pentecost, so what happened on the day of Pentecost? I was, I was telling the Winston Church this morning, I said, you know, had the Holy Ghost come on the, during the Feast of Tabernacles, we'd be called Tabernacleist. Hallelujah. But it came, the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost, so we're called Pentecostals. Amen. Some of you go, well, so, well what's the Pentecost on the charismatic? They're the same thing. There's no difference between the Pente- Pentecost. I grew up classical Pentecostal, and I came over among the charismatics, they're the same thing. Same animal, put them in a the bag, shake them up, dump them out, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Hallelujah. Amen. They believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the gifts of the Spirit, manifestation for the church today. Amen. Glory to God. So let's go to Acts chapter 2. Hallelujah. We'll start right there in Acts 2. Good place to start, isn't it? How many love Jesus? How many glad you're not going to hell? How many glad you're in church and not in the hospital? Amen. Did, did everybody hear my joke last week? I had, I had a joke. I'm, I'm, for the benefit of those who weren't here, I'm going to give a joke. I, I enjoy this joke. I'll, t- I'll tell you everywhere I go. Hallelujah. Um, man was, as man's wife was 80 years old, getting ready, and she was standing before a judge because she had stolen something at a, at a grocery store. And uh, the judge said, man, what did you steal? She said, a can of peaches. He said, why did you steal it? She said, I was hungry. He said, how many peaches were in that can? She said, six. He said, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Is I, I'm going to sentence you to six days in jail. And right about that time, the husband interrupted and said, wait, whoa, 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 judge, can I say something before you finish your sentence? And he said, well, well, sure. She also stole a can of peas. I like that joke. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> oh, oh, touche. C'est vrai. All right, all right. Acts chapter 2, verse 1, she says, because I'm a man. What can you say? I mean, you know, when, you, when you've been got, you got. Hallelujah. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Now, Pentecost, Pente comes from 50, 50 days since Passover, was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. Now, we could, we could stop and do Bible studies about, on about every word in this passage. You know, one accord in one place. There is something to be said about unity in the body of Christ. Now, not unity at, for, at the sake of doctrine, amen? Now, now listen, you don't, you, know, you don't get in unity with people who don't believe that Jesus is the king of kings. You know, they don't believe that Jesus is God's son. You can't get in unity with those kind of people, amen? Well, I'm a Christian because I, you know, I go to a Christian church, but you know, I also believe that, you know, that the Hindus have got it going on, the Buddhists have got it going on, the Muslims have got it going on. Jesus is just one of many. Well, Jesus said, I'm the only way, so you can't be in harmony with them. Amen. So when I'm saying unity, we're coming into one accord. We're coming into a place where we're getting, we're getting our hearts fixed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. They got to one place. They were in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Now remember, if you'll remember, that when this started out, there was 500 that were up there in the upper room when they got started. By, by this time, there's only 120 left. 380 gave up. Can you, can you imagine being 121 just left? Come running back to find out the Holy Ghost has been poured out. Man, I was just left from up there. Man, that's a bummer. You know, what's, what, be, be, have tenacity in the things of God. Don't grow weary of the things of God. Amen? Keep after it, glory to God. Stay after it with everything you got. I'm telling you, be like a bulldog with a bone. Hallelujah. Try to take his bone see what happens. Go to a Rottweiler and he's got a bone in his mouth and, see what, and try to take it and see what happens to you. He'll have two bones. Amen. One of them is your forearm. Got to have some tenacity. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. And you know, I just flipped four, four pages. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each one of them. And, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and to began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Woo, glory. I said, I'm telling you, remember John the Baptist said about Jesus, and we'll, and we'll probably recover some scriptures. When I go extemporaneous, I give scriptures away, and then I go back and cover when I get back to my notes. So just, if you hear it twice, woo, 
Amen? Just rejoice. But remember, John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus come, he said, there's one that comes after me who's mightier than I. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of charismatics who've lost the fire. There's a lot of Pentecostals who've lost the fire. We've got institutionalized. We've got, yeah, we believe in that. It's become our, you know, our, our, uh, our red badge of courage. It's the thing we, we put on that says, I'm a Pentecostal. Yeah, when's the last time you spoke in tongues? Well, about June the 4th, 1978, I spoke in tongues. I had a little, little, whoo, and I spoke in tongues. Now, I had a Pentecostal grandmama. <clears throat> she would not speak in tongues unless there was some kind of strong move of the Spirit. You know, and then we come along and say, Grandma, anytime you want to just yield over to the Holy Ghost, you can speak it to I mean, that was heresy. Going to get out the Pentecost to hold this manual and read it. Now you can't do that. But yeah, you can. We need to be, we need to have the fire of the Holy Ghost. I can't take the coat today. Just sorry. Hallelujah. You have to look at my white shirt. Amen. Glory to God. I'm, you, we got to have the fire of the Holy Ghost. When I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you, it's like fire in my belly shot up through my esophagus. My jaws and lips were on fire. Glory to God. And, and, and static utterances came out by the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And I'm telling you, we don't want to lose the fire. We want to stay in the fire. Amen. I don't want to be in the smoke. I want to be in the fire. Somebody say amen. I want to burn with the passion of the Spirit of God indwelling me, praise God. I don't want to institutionalize anything. Well, we don't do that on Sunday mornings because the mayor might be here. The mayor needs the Holy Ghost. My God. We're getting so cute with everything. But we might run visitors away. Visitors, you need the Holy Ghost. You need to be born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost. You need to be a Bible-toting, devil-casting-out, tongue-talking believer. I don't believe in that. Stay with me. The only reason you don't believe in it is because you hadn't heard it from the Word. Believers believe the Word. I said believers believe the Word. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem's devout men out of every nation under heaven. And when there was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded <clears throat> because that every man heard them speak in his own tongue. Now, when you go down and read this list of nations, there's 19 different nations there. There's 120 people speaking in tongues up there on the balcony, and they get out there in the street with 3,000 people and can hear their own language. That's a miracle in itself. There's no way. You can't do that. Now, it's not that they heard a word or two in, in their language. It's they heard them speak the, and magnify the wonderful works of God. Amen. They're, I mean, God's doing all kinds of stuff here. I said, God's doing all kinds of stuff here. <clears throat> and remember, why are they sitting up in that upper room in the first place? Back over in Acts chapter 1. Tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high after what? The Holy Ghost has come upon you. God wants the Holy Ghost on people. Amen? Well, when you get born again, you get all the Holy Ghost you're going to get. Stay with me. We'll cover that one. Amen? I got scripture just to pfft, that one right out the door. Right in the Bible. Not, not, not the Ed Taylor version, the Bible version. The, the King James version. All right. Not the 1611. I, I can't, you can't read that. I can't read it. Hallelujah. But the, the, Jesus told the church, stay here. Don't go anywhere. Until you get empowered from on high. What was that empowerment? The Holy Ghost coming on you. You need the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. Well, I got baptized. Yeah, but you can kind of get weak. Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus and said, don't be drunk with wine. Now we got churches putting on the websites, we drink wine. I will put on my website, we drink from the Holy Ghost. My God, we're filled with the spirit of the living God, not with the spirit of alcohol. Amen. We drink wine with our dinner. We have beer and stogie parties. The men's fellowship are drinking stogies from Cuba, drinking designer beers. My God, what's come to, what has the church come to? I said, what has the church come to? When we should be coming into men's or women's fellowships, when we should be coming into the house of God and we're getting into the spirit of God, we're getting full of the Holy Ghost again. We're coming into harmony one with another in the realm of the spirit, praise God. We're not filling the room with the smoke of a cigar. It's being filled with the smoke of the glory of God. 
like Isaiah. And in the year that King Uzziah died, I was high and lifted up. I mean, and I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And his train, the train of his glory, filled the temple. And he began to cry out, woe is me, I'm undone. You don't cry out, woe is me, I'm undone, spoken on your stogie. Hello. Drinking your Chardonnay with your red meat. I don't know. You, don't, you probably listen to me. I have no idea what goes with what. Your red wine with this and your white wine with that and your Chardonnay with this and a little this with that and this you know, and all this garbage. And advertise on your church website. We drink wine. Why? Because why, why? you don't have the Holy Ghost working? I said, you don't have the Holy Ghost at work? When are we, we going to start advertising? Move of the Spirit in our church. The Holy Ghost shows up and demonstrates. People are healed. Demons are cast out. The lame walk, the blind see. Amen? Amen. I trying to quote that. I kept mess, messed it up. Now I can't get it back. But you, Go tell John. The lame walk, the blind see, and the deaf hear. It, and the poor, thank you, that's, I knew something. And the poor had the gospel preached to them. Jesus didn't say, go tell them, we got a box of Cuban cigars out here. That pr no. We said, I'm telling you, this stuff's going on in the church. This is the day of Pentecost. We got, listen, the Baptists have just said that they're not going to punish their missionaries anymore if they speak in tongues. God's moving in the Baptist, getting them filled with the Holy Ghost. And the charismatics are playing games with wine and beer and, beer and smoking cigars. We were born in the fire. Let me tell you something, folks. If you were born in the fire, you're going to have to live in the fire. We were, brought out, we were brought out of the world, and the fire of God cleansed us from worldly things. Hallelujah. We got baptized in the Holy Ghost and spoken tongues, and the fire of God worked from the inside out, cleansing us and purifying us and making meat for the master's use. Praise God. Hallelujah. Peter, the cussing denier. Go read about Peter. Before the, clock, before the cock crows twice, you'll deny me three times. Not me, Lord, not me. You're one of them. No, I ain't one of them. I saw you. You were with him. No, I'm not one. Hey, I know you're one of them. Your speech betrays you. I'm blankety blank, 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 not one of them. The Bible says he cussed, he cursed. Southern, that's cussed. We don't curse, we cuss down south, all right? Are y'all here? <coughs> and he went out <coughs> and wept bitterly. And 50 days later, he stumbles out of that upper room, hallelujah, baptized in the Holy Ghost with the fire of God and stands up where all men and women can hear him. And he says, ye men of Jerusalem, he said, he said, these are not drunk as ye suppose, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last days I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, on my handmaidens and on my sons and daughters, and they will prophesy glory to God. Hallelujah. And 3,000 people got saved. Now, just 30, 50 days before, he's lying, denying, and cussing. Yeah, yeah. What happened? He got in the fire. I said he got into the fire. He got into the fire of the Holy Ghost, praise God. And something got down in his bones. And the, as the Old Testament prophet said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. And I'm telling you, I'm calling you, this church, and I'm calling the church of Winston, and I'm calling anybody who's watching us on the internet, that we are time. It is time. We stop playing man games. It is stop time that we stop being trying to be seeker sensitive. It's time that we start stop trying to have a little plan to get the back ends in the seat so we can get the offerings up, so that we can drive around in our fancy prosperity car with our prosperity tie and our prosperity house. God will prosper you if you'll follow after him. God will prosper for you if you'll do it the way he said do it. It is time we stop playing games in the church and that we bring the fire of God back into the house of God where men and women come in and they are purged and they are cleansed and they are set free by God's glory and God's power. And it's not going to happen with a bunch of mealy mouth, wimpy face, people running around trying to be cute. 
It's going to happen because men and women are coming into one accord and the glory of God is coming into manifestation. I said the glory of God. It got so strong in churches, the building shook. Because somebody say amen. When's the last, you know, that's one thing for somebody, to, for a person to shake. Wait till the building starts shaking. See, people don't want this, a lot of people don't want this kind of preaching. They don't want this kind of experience. Why? Because then they're going to have to start giving up stuff. The fires are going to begin to purge them. And the fires are going to begin to deal with them. Well, then if, you, if that's where you are, that's exactly what you need. You need, to be, you, need a, you need a fresh baptism in the fire of God. Where the church is not something you do. Your Sunday morning visitation to the house of God is not part of your religious experience. That you live in the fire of the Holy Ghost where it burns in you. Hallelujah. To the point that you're able to be effective in ministry. You walk in the power of God. You don't hear about miracles. You're working them. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They'll cast out devils. You don't need to be going seeing poltergeists and getting afraid of the devil. You need to go find you a poltergeist and cast it out. Amen. 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 They'll speak with new tongues. We're supposed to be speaking in new tongues, glory to God. They'll take up serpents. Now, that does not mean a Pentecostal snake handling service. You know, you don't get baskets on the platform, put rattlesnakes in there and go there and dance with them. Wendy, Wendy Bagwell, the sunlighter, he said one time he went up somewhere up in West Virginia. They had to drop, drop cords two miles. They had no electricity up there, so they run their equipment. He got up there and got to the church and, and uh, asked the pastor. He said, well, where, what are those baskets? He said, you'll see. About halfway into the service, some woman ran there, threw the top off, grabbed out a rattlesnake, started dancing around with it. He turned to the pastor and said, where's the back door? He said, we don't have one. He said, where do you want it? <laughs> He's getting ready to make one. Praise God. No, you don't, you don't dance with rattlesnakes. That's not, you know, it's like Paul in the Adamalitis. When he picked up that, that wood to burn on the fire, a, a venomous snake came out and bit him on the arm, and he shook it off, and they all sat around and watched him because they know he's going to be de He's done. They're, they're timing it, you know? I mean, they're looking at their moon dial. All right, you know? <laughs> you know? Uh, and then he doesn't fall over dead. They're like, what happened? You know? he, see, if you, if, if you uh, take up serpents, and if you drink any dead thing, you don't drink strict nine on purpose, but I tell you what, if, somebody just, if you drink something poison or something happens like that, you can claim immunity in the name of Jesus. They'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. We, the church was birthed as a supernatural miracle sign working church and now we've gotten cute. We want to have rock climbing walls and we want to have events. We want to have little, you know, get together clubs and meet some kind of social need. And I'm, just, I'm not against all of that, but what I am telling you is if we do not have the fire, if we do not have the working of the Holy Ghost, if men and women's lives are not being burned by the power of God, all your rock climbing walls will get them as calluses on their fingers. Hello. Cute little kids programs where they don't even talk about Jesus. Hello? Where they don't even know anything about God. They leave the youth program, the, the children's church program, the youth program, and they think Jesus was James Taylor's songs on youth night. Y'all hear you gone home? Jesus said, don't you go anywhere. I'm off my notes, by the way. Don't you go anywhere until you get the power of the Holy Ghost. And they set up in that upper room, the 500. 380 gave up. Then the day of Pentecost came, and the sound came from heaven. They got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Peter stumbled out there, preached that sermon. 3,000 people got saved. Amen. And the world has not been the same since. But a church birthed in the fire must exist in the fire. I said, a church birthed in the fire must exist in the fire. We wonder, if people say, oh, millennials are leaving the church because it's, it's, everybody's trying to come up with a plan to keep the millennials. You know what the millennials are interested in? Real. They're not interested in cute. They're not interested in 57-year-old pastors, you know, getting gauges in their ears and getting tatted all up and getting piercings up in their eyebrows and having one in their tongue and getting their jaws open up with gauges like this so you can see the size of it. I mean, looking like, you know, something just, you know, that they just drug out of the gut or somewhere. They're not, they're not interested in that. 
I'm not going to be effective in ministering to young people because I look like a young person. They look, they look at me and go, you're an old dude. Hello? Even when I dye my hair, I still look old. I'm 57 this August. All right? I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not a millennial. I don't need a full sleeve or a half sleeve. Did you say something? I'll deal with you when I get home. What the, see, and the reason the millennials are doing all this stuff is they can't find anything that's real anymore. They're living in ultra states. They're trying to find something in their life that makes sense. And the church is weenified. Can I get my Jesse Duplantis look? We're running around a bunch of weenies. We drink wine. Well, that, that, that impresses them. To advertise that. I smoke stogies. That impresses them. Not. I'm going to tell you what will impress them. It's coming in and having an encounter with the true and the living God. In a way that radically affects everything about them. That they can't even stand because of the glory of God manifest in their presence. Well, God knocked sinners down. What do you think happened to the Roman soldiers when they came to get Jesus? They walk up and he said, who are you looking for? They said, Jesus. He said, I'm him. Boom. Don't you know they had a, they had a rough night's sleep that night. They get home. Baby, you ain't going to believe what happened. I want you to rest this Jesus guy. Ask who he was. He said, I'm him. And, and next thing I know, me and the whole guy, bunch of guys are laying on the ground. Boom. When people come in contact with the presence of God, they may not get saved right then. I, I remember as a Pentecostal kid running from God. But I had too many times at the altar where the old saint got their hands on you. And God's glory comes down and gets all over you. And you're, you're doing it. I got to get out of here. You're almost like they're walking dead trying to get out of there. Hello? You're doing everything. I mean, you're like, oh, God. And then you get out somewhere by yourself. And you're all alone. And all of a sudden, you're really realizing God's real. I encountered something there. I can't put my finger on it. I can't tangibly explain what it was. But God's glory, God's presence was all over you. You're out, you're out trying to sin. Hello? It's, it's just miserable being, living in sin when you know God's real. I'm just going to tell you. It's just a miserable place. You try and you can't have fun. Why? Because God's been all over you. You almost feel like you're, you're polluting God because you're trying to sin and he's real. How do you know? God, I mean, I was at the altar the other night and Brother Paramore and Sister So-and-So and Brother So-and-So, they all prayed the glory down. God, use this young man for your glory. I don't want to do that. I want to go sin. Glory all over you. Hello? Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Somebody one time wanted to sell cigarettes in a vending machine. I said, fine, go ahead and sell them. But before you put the cigarettes in the machine, hold it up and say, Lord, I sell these to your glory. They came back a week later. Can I talk to you, Pastor? Sure. Know what you told me about the vending machine? Yep. I couldn't sell anything. <laughs> yeah, I knew that. There's no way you, could do, you couldn't do it with a good conscience to the glory of God knowing what you were doing. Hello? Are you here? The church must once again regain the place of living in the fire. How are we going to do that? Now, I'm way off my, I'm way, way, so way off my notes I can't get back to them. Okay? I have them. They're there, okay? I really do have them, okay? Oh, there, see, there they are. So I'm, not, I'm not faking it. But we have got to get back to, how do we get back to that place where the fire is on us? The same way they do with the book of Acts. They would come back, they would go out and get persecuted, and they'd come back, Lord, behold their threatenings. Then grant unto thy servants boldness. By stretching forth thine hand to heal in the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And the place would shake. 
And the Bible said they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, it's the same bunch that already been filled. They got refilled. Yeah. Ephesians 6, 18 says, be, be ye, now Greek, but be ye being filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Didn't it say drink a glass of Chardonnay? It said speak to the Lord. Get into the Spirit. Get saturated by the Holy Ghost. See, we want to live in third generation blessing without first generation commitment. See, we're about third generation Pentecostals by now. Maybe moving into the fourth. We want to read about Smith Wigglesworth raising the dead 26 times. But we want to do it watching the world turn, drinking wine, and fornicating. Wigglesworth didn't get there doing all that stuff. What, Lester Summerall, Brother Summerall, showed up at Wigglesworth's house one day uh, with a newspaper under his arm. Got to the front door and knocked on it. And Brother Wigglesworth came to the door and said, you young man can come in, but that thing stays outside. What's wrong with a newspaper? Well, nothing. But Wigglesworth raised the dead 26 times. Hello? I said, hello. How did he get there? God. He, and then he said, well, someone said, they come in, they pray for an hour and a half, two hours. He'd get up, look at him, say, see you tomorrow, and leave the room. There wasn't any talk. There wasn't any whatever. See you tomorrow. Now, he didn't bring the newspaper back the second day. Well, some of all used to say this. He said, and, I, and I've, I've, been in, I've been sitting with him in meals. I've been in, in rooms with him at, at meals. A small group of ministers, several times. He said, I did not have the boldness. That, you know, everybody thinks about brother, some of bull in a china shop. You know? He said, that boldness was not on me until Wigglesworth laid hands on me. He said, I didn't have that boldness. And his wife was a cat bird. I'm telling you, she, she was probably bolder than him before, that, before Wigglesworth laid hands on him. I went to serve a water one time in a ready room, and uh, I said, would you like some water, Miss Sister Summerall? No. You know, Southerners, we, we ask twice. Don't ever ask somebody like that twice. I asked her again. She looked at me with, the, I mean, she got beady eyed and looked right straight at me and said, I said, young man, I don't want any. Yes, Sister Summerall. And I just, I just went out and stood outside the door. <laughs> she needs something, she can call on me. I done got the message. Well, you know, she was a missionary on her own for, for years before she met Brother Summerall. But he said that the boldness we all think that Brother Summerall had, and he was bold. I said, he was bold. He said it didn't come on him until Wigglesworth laid hands on him. How did Wigglesworth get to the place that he can impart such, such an anointing and have, just like, you know, uh, Paul wrote to Timothy, he said, stir up the gift that's within thee by the laying on the hands of the presbytery. Okay? How did he get to that place when he laid hands on someone, that kind of, power, that kind of anointing and that kind of power and that kind of boldness came on them? He lived in the fire. I said he lived in the fire. Are you here? Amen. I said, are you here? Amen. He didn't get, he did not get that. <clears throat> Living, not even in the smoke, but in the smoke machine. Artificial fire. Dad Hagen had that camp meeting in 1987. Some of y'all remember it. The book, Plans, Purposes, and Pursuits, came out of that camp meeting. And I'm telling you, major Christian magazines were calling him a false prophet. Because he said, you know, clapping is neither praise nor worship. And that we've substituted brass for gold in the church. How many of you ever read the book, Plans, Purposes, and Pursuits? Okay, good. And it's a good book to read. Now, he, would, he wouldn't even allow, the Lord wouldn't allow him to uh, distribute the tapes because people would take excerpts and, and, and try to say he said things. They actually had to put it in book form. Or they, didn't, they didn't release the tapes. Had to release the book so that it was in writing so people couldn't say he said something he didn't say. Because that's what they were doing. They didn't even sell the tapes for that camp meeting. I do have a bootleg copy. Anyway, <laughs> if you know the right people, you can get some stuff. All right? Hallelujah. But he's, the thing he was talking about was substituting brass for gold. We got now smoke machines to substitute that 
for the glory. We want to we fill the room with a smoke and everybody kind of goes, oh. They wouldn't even know what, the, what to do if the glory showed up. I've seen the glory. I said, I've seen the glory. I've been in the manifest, manifest presence of the glory. <laughs> my, oh, my. Itroskemadadegiska. Uh, huh, huh, huh. Uh, you know, when you, when you start getting to talking about the things of God, he'll start showing up manifesting. When you magnify him. Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen. Amen. I've been in services where, you know, uh, the ministers, the glory came in because of, what the, because of their ministries. I've been, we've been in this church, in this building, we've had the glory. I've seen the glory. In this building. Not enough. We're not seeing enough. Because everybody gets, you know, get their feelings hurt about this. or get their feelings hurt about that. And they want to run off on this. And they want to go find some place that has every, every social thing they need. And every human fleshly thing they need. And what you need is the glory. You need the power. You need the fire. You need to live in the fire. I said you need to live in the fire. You're going to have to pray in tongues. You're going to have to sing in tongues. You're going to have to sing psalms. You're going to have to sing hymns, spiritual songs. You're going to have to get over to the Spirit. Pastor Ed cannot make that happen. Service in and service out. You have to come with it. You have to bring your fire. Amen? I said you have to bring your fire. You put hot coals on a wood stove and throw some wood on it, it'll burn. Me and Nathan were up, we, were up, had to go to the, we went to the cabin this week for a couple of days. Well, they went up for a couple of days. I went up for 24 hours. Went late Friday, came back late Saturday. Hallelujah. Well, Saturday night, Friday night, we had a campfire outside. Well, it got kind of late. It was time to go in. We have a wood stove in there. And he said, you know, Dad, the basement got kind of chilly last night, so I want to have a fire in the, in the wood stove in the basement. Okay, buddy. So we scooped up all the coals in a, in a pan and took it and kept dumping it in until we got them all out of the, fire, out of the pit. There was, no, there was no burning fire at that point in time. We threw some fresh wood in there in just a minute or two. Amen. See, if you'll come already cold up, not cold, C-O-L-D, but C-O-A-L. Hot. I'm telling you, he, he hold the, had hot pads holding the, the, the pan we had him in. Like this, he couldn't put his face over because the heat was so hot coming out of there. I'm telling you. We stay red hot as a church and fresh wood comes in, it'll burn. I said, it'll burn. You get people coming in who are bound, they're fresh wood. Not fresh meat, fresh wood. They come in, they're bound, they're oppressed, they got all kinds of stuff, and they'll burn with the glory, and it'll burn off all that junk out of their life. If we're all, if we're all red hot. Now, that same wood stove, when I looked in there, there was nothing but old ash in there. It was, I mean, it was, there wasn't any heat in it. It was room temperature in there before we started putting those coals in. He could throw that wood in there and it would never caught. Could throw all that fresh wood in there and just left it there and come back six months from now and it would still be sitting there. Nothing happening to it. But because we put the hot coals in first and brought that fresh wood in contact with it, whew, that's why the church has to stay red hot. I said, we got to stay red hot. Now, have you ever seen coals in, in, in a fire pit or a fireplace? What happens when wind blows across it? Well, they, they get really, 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 really bright. They get really, 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 really hot. And you know what? The, the word for spirit is the same word for wind. If we'll keep our eyes hot and allow the winds of the spirit to blow on us, we'll be red hot. It increases the temperature uh, exponentially for the wind to blow on the coals. All God is asking us to do is to stay good and hot so he can blow on us with his spirit. And intensify the heat of the anointing on our lives. So that we can come in contact with the things of this world, the people of this world. And it burn. It burn. All the stuff out of their life. Glory to God. By praying in the Spirit, praying with our understanding, 
singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, staying in the Holy Ghost. Coming out of that place with God, we've had the breath of the Spirit blowing on you. Red hot for Jesus. And here's the beautiful thing. Well, I may not want to give up this, and I may not want to give up that. Let me tell you something. When you take garbage into the presence and get into the presence, when you come out, it won't be there because it will be burned up. Now, you can't go in there with, with some little Mickey Mouse and, let, and, and have a uh, cast iron chamber around all the stuff you don't want the Lord to get to. You have to open it up and dump it out in the fire. And what comes out, comes out. And what don't gets burned up, it's gone. Hello? Amen? So we're a Pentecostal church. Charismatic, Pentecostal, but Pentecostal. The day's Pentecostal, we're Pentecostals. We're going to stay in the fire. Now Nathan was, you know, was asking me the other day, he said, you know where that smoke is? And I said, what, son? He said, <clears throat> it's the gases that haven't fully been... What? Fully been burned. They're not hot enough to burn. We got too many smoky Christians. See, we got too many smoky. Did you get that from Josh? No, okay, yes you did. All right. We got too many smoky Christians. We need to stop being called smoky and being called fireballs. That, we're, that, the, that, that the fire is burning and consuming in our lives. Amen? I said amen. amen. So what are we going to do? We're going to stay on fire. We're going to stop being Mickey Mouse. We're going to stop playing games. We're going to get back in the spirit. We're going to get back to praying in tongues. We're going to get back into the fire. Glory to God. And, let, and Well, I got stuff on me that's going to smoke. Well, let it smoke. I, I, we, we sat there before and, you know, in the, in, and get a piece of wood that's gotten, where it's not doing that. And it'll smoke down. And all of a sudden, you put some air on it. It gets enough air, wind on it. And it, poof, turns back to fire. If you're smoky, get back into the spirit. And let the wind of God's spirit blow on you again. And ignite the fires once again. I got the one scripture. <laughs> Hallelujah. That leaves me a whole lot for next week. We trust that you were blessed by the word of God and the flow of the spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, PO Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.